Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Leaders Credit Union. Thank you, Zach, and welcome everybody to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast where we explore the history, the people, and the culture of our home here in beautiful West Tennessee. I'm your host, Scott Williams. Okay, Zach, before I welcome today's very special guest, what is something you discovered this week at Discovery Park of America? This week, I discovered some interesting facts about Noodle, the three-toed amphuma we have in our regional history gallery. Uh, first thing, guests usually think it's an eel. I myself did that. Uh, but if amphuma is more like a salamander. And the funny thing about this guy is he has tiny legs and arms. I don't know if you even knew that. but I you, did. I, you know what? <laughs> you have I to look. get close to see them. So no, I did not know that. That is uh, fascinating. You never know. There's all kinds of fish. For people who haven't been here, there's fish, there's turtles, there's a few months. Is that what you said? Uh, I think I've I thought that you right. paused uh, when you got uh, ready to say it. So <laughs> um, anyway, so our very special guest today is Jessica Duncan. Jessica is the owner of Lily's Garden in New Bern, Tennessee. Did I say that right? Is it New Bern? Yes. Awesome. New Bern. So um, welcome to... Uh, Jessica has uh, implemented a great uh, business um, at her farm. And so, first of all, tell us a little bit about you. Are you originally from New Bern? Yeah, I've lived here my whole life, and I've honestly never gardened a day in my life before 2019. Once 2019 hit and we bought our house, which is my first house, I just fell in love with gardening from there. So you uh, bought a house. And I'm assuming, was there already uh, uh, places where you could have a garden there? Had they been gardening when you bought the house or was it just field? Yeah, the previous owner, um, she had planted some crocuses and daffodils, like a whole aisle of daffodils along the fence line. Mm -hmm. Once I seen that pop up in the spring, it was just an immediate connection I had with the nature, basically. And I fell in love and I've been gardening ever since then. I've always done perennials, though. I've never done seeds until last year. So you bought this property and you go there and it's basically, you know, a few flowers here and there. Tell us about the property that you bought and what it looked like when you first got there. There was dead trees everywhere. We had to cut down tons of trees and do stump gardening to get rid of those. Um, and then along the fence line, I found daffodils and crocuses and that's what caught my attention and made me have an instant connection to nature it just brings me joy that's interesting isn't it that you weren't really a gardener when you first moved there and it's just seeing those flowers sort of triggered something inspired you to do something different yeah it did i honestly never noticed flowers like in that 2019 year i never even noticed the flowers in our yard while we were remodeling but they were there because I looked back at pictures. And then the next year in that 2020 spring, that's when I started noticing everything with the rain. And then I would notice the rain drops on the petals of the flowers and the breeze blowing in the wind, the birds flying through the yard. And it just brought me this immense sense of peace and hope. I did not know at the time that that's what that feeling was, but Finally, I learned how to describe that feeling. It's just an immense sense of peace and hope for me. Wow, that's amazing. And so you started planting more, I'm assuming. What what did you, what was the next step in the process? Uh, did you plant seeds? Did you buy plants that, you know, from the hardware store? What, what was next? I mainly only purchased plants from the nursery and Lowe's. I would just go there every week and spend like a budgeted amount, maybe like $50 a week and buy whatever I wanted, usually on the clearance aisle. And then I'd watch, especially the clearance plants, they were all ugly and shag, shag, shaggly. Yeah, yeah. And I would like bringing them back to life, but I never planted seeds except for sunflowers and zinnias, which are really easy to plant, but like lysianthus seeds, larkspur, um, different seeds that basil, just varying options i've never done any of that until i started so you um you started planting things and you started having success where how did you learn what tools did you use to learn about flower farming 
Uh, flower farming, learning about flower farming. I went to Facebook and learned, found a Facebook group. And then I also searched YouTube. That's basically everything I learned was through YouTube and Facebook. I read basically all day because I was a stay at home mom at the time. So I read all day and I watched videos over and over again and just really immersed myself into the research. And I was terrified of failing, but I knew that for me, like the way I learn is by making mistakes. So I just like, I have to dive in right now. If I wait until I, everything's perfect, it'll never happen for me. So I just dove right in and that's how I learned the best. And so um, at what point did you decide, you know what, I'm going to try a small business out of, out of this flower farm? I knew that I wanted, I've always wanted to start a business. I just was not sure what I wanted to do. Nothing ever clicked. My husband would give me ideas. I'm like, no, no, no. And I just didn't have that focus and inspiration to do so. Once I, I was on Holland Ball Farm, which is my favorite, one of my most favorite websites. And I noticed there were some lilies for sale. It was like a hundred for $35 or something like that. And I'm like, I'm going to purchase these and pot them up and sell them. So that's what I did. But learning the legalities of it, I knew I I was researching that. And that's when I learned about flower farming. And from there, it just took off. Um, I knew instantly, like, this is it. It was an aha moment. It's what I want to do with my life. And so you um, you obviously found out about uh, flowers and planting and growing things on YouTube. And what about the business part of the business of flower farming? Where did you learn about that? Honestly, I'm winging it. <laughs> um, I knew that in the beginning that this was something I wanted to do. So I just made sure to track every single thing, like every purchase and every, ex well, just every expense I had, anything I had incoming. And I knew to categorize that. I, honestly, I'm just an organized person. So it just kind of came easy to me to do that. Um, I still struggle in some areas, but for the most part, I just kind of winged it. Well, and Zach, have you been um, there to Lily's Flower Farm? I mean, uh, Lily's Garden? I have not. You need to take your kids. I have been. And so as a, from the customer side, I can, you know, share that you pull up because um, we were there. I don't know if you even remember seeing me there, but I was there um, uh, probably three or four weeks ago. Um, and it was a Sunday afternoon after church. And we... Uh, you go up and there's like a little shed there and there are little jars and you pay a certain amount for one size jar and a certain amount for another. And then you pick as many flowers as you can get in the, in the jar. Um, and then she has water there. I mean, she's super organized um, and you do everything over the phone. There's the Venmo and the other things. And so um what from the very beginning when you started, how long have you been doing this now? I started in January 2023. Okay. So and of course what, this is only my second season. What what has evolved through the experience of doing this in a couple of years? What has changed in the process that I experienced? How is it different from when it started out? For me, honestly, it just it changed the biggest change that I've had starting this is me, myself. I've come, I went from an introvert, not talking to many people to, Hey, everybody needs to know who I am. So I've literally thrown myself out into every situation I can trying to market my flower farm. And I've basically blossomed. If you want to say that, I don't know how to explain it. It's just, yeah, I, no, that's great. Came out. I just came out of my little shell. And that's ironic. And that's been my biggest, it's a flower yeah, that's farm. My, mm -hmm, it's my biggest way of, just that's the biggest change I've had um, more than anything. So for people who are listening, who have an idea and haven't yet implemented it, what's your advice to them? Dive right in. That's the only thing I, I know is you just have to do it. You don't worry about mistakes. You're going to learn from those mistakes and you just have to do it, especially if you want to start a flower farm, you have to just start, and you're going to make mistakes and kill plants. I kill them all the time. And I'm even now stuck with just zinnias and sunflowers due to several mistakes I made this year. And I'm not going to worry about it. I have hope that everything's going to be okay next year. And I'm just planning for a better year next year. 
we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, I'm going to ask you some more specific questions about flower farming. With nine branches in West Tennessee and nationwide ATM and branch access, you can take Leaders Credit Union with you wherever you go. From checking accounts, credit cards, home loans, and their state-of-the-art mobile app, Banking with Leaders can help you move forward. Learn more and see how you can qualify for membership at LeadersCU.com. I hope you're enjoying the Real Foot Forward podcast from Discovery Park of America. If you are, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a positive review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. This is your host, Scott Williams, and our guest today is Jessica Duncan, uh, the owner of Lily's uh, Garden in New Bern, Tennessee. And we're talking about how her new small business that she started has helped her blossom as well as the flowers that she's planted. So um, one thing that I noticed that I was really impressed by is just the way you had it organized as far as the black stuff that was on the ground and the way. And so I'm curious, like all those flowers that I saw, do you plant those as seeds or do you plant those as little plants? How do you get the, you know, there are no weeds. It's just literally flowers everywhere. So tell us about just the uh, technical part of what you do. Okay. So in the fall, what I did last year is I I hired someone to till up the garden for me. And then over the winter time, I worked slowly on adding the weed fabric and that helped take care of the weeds while it sat there. And then finally by spring, when it was dry enough to work, I burned holes into the fabric and with a a contraption my husband made. And I just used that to burn holes every so inches apart. Each flower requires different inches apart. So I did that. And then my zinnias, I did direct seed. My sunflowers, I direct seeded, which is planting them straight in the garden from seed. But for the most part, every single plant I grow is started indoors. And um, I actually do it in my living room and kitchen. I don't have a shed or anything like that yet to work in. So I work from home. Um, I have a cluttered kitchen, a cluttered living room all year long during the winter season. And even now, <laughs> I just have shelves with grow lights on them, chains. My husband helped me come up with the idea on how to do that setup. He's very handy in that way where I'm not. What and does then he do? I what do, does your husband do? He manages Duncan's Food Mart in New Bern. Okay, That's his awesome. family. It's his dad's store. And he's obviously very handy and obviously a great supporter of your efforts. Yes, he is. He is. And so you plant you plant the things indoors and you have them growing. And then um, how do you know at what point is, t- you know, what here's what I did wrong. I, I have a tiny little zinnia patch, but I planted it too early. I it was still cold outside when I and so they didn't grow very well this year, I think, because of that. Yeah, you have to wait a certain time. I started around like April 27th. I believe is whenever I did my direct seeding. I actually write everything in a planner from when I start seeds, what the temperature was. I tried to track the last frost and the night temperatures during that season about starting in March, Mm -hmm. just so I can track everything and keep it organized. So this year, well, in 2025, I'll be able to look back to my 2024 season and know when I should start something or if it was too late. Or maybe if the last frost is going to be a little earlier than stated. Um, and so what are some of the uh, planting, both good or bad surprises that you ran into so far in the two years you've been doing this? What have you learned? My biggest thing is dahlias. I've not been able to grow them and I want to so bad. Um, last year, what I did was I started them in pots in potting soil and then I t- started them in about May and then I transplanted about the end of May which was great but I wasn't very organized in my routine yet at the time so I wasn't able to keep them watered or fertilized they require lots of fertilizer so I just wasn't taking care of them and they died and then this year I'm like I'm going to plant them straight in the ground and I have clay soil out here which is it's just awful I don't know how I can grow anything honestly <laughs> Right. But yeah. I have a lot of clay soil too. In the ground and it just did not grow. Not a single one grew. And I haven't dug them up yet to check on them. I will. I'm going to dig them up soon. Hopefully they're still good for next year. But either way, I know what I'm going to do next year. And that is I'm going to come 
in with a plan, like a schedule. And I'm going to follow that schedule precisely on what I need to do, when to be able to keep organized. Yeah, I noticed and, you have a whole, like two new beds that um, have been plowed up next to all the flowers. Is that, have you got something special in mind for that? I'm going to plant, I was going to plant sunflowers, but again, I got behind. So I have a little bit of sunflowers there. However, I'm going to expand the bed. I'm going to till it again and cover it with weed fabric. And that's where I'm going to be doing a lot of my spring plants. I'm fall planting right now, which is, means I just started seeds like Larkspur, Delphinium, um, Bells of Ireland, different cool flowers that you have to start in the fall in our zone. And I'm going to transplant them in probably October or September or so. And I have to build low tunnels to take care of those over the winter time. Oh, wow. Okay, excellent. Um, and then, you know, this is definitely um, uh, an ag tourism business. Um, I mean, I know you're appealing to a lot of locals as well, but, you know, it's a great business f for to to attract people who are on their way to Discovery Park or, you know, who are on their way somewhere else. And um, so what are some of the things you're doing to get yourself out there and to make more people aware that you exist? Um, I've joined clubs and I've walked around town, well, drove around town, stopped at every business that I can, offered flyers, let them know that I'm open. Um, and I post a lot on Facebook. I try to update everyone on Facebook every day to keep up with the algorithm. And mainly it's just throwing myself out there. That's the biggest thing I have to do is throw myself out there and not be an introvert. Um, and if if somebody's listening and they want to follow you, uh, is it uh, Lily's Garden? Is that what they should search? Yes, yes, okay. and it's a blue logo. Yeah, so search Lily's Garden. Um, it's L I L Y, right? Yes. What what where does this, does the name have any significance? It does. I started Lily's Garden. Well, I came up with the name of Lily's Garden because I already knew I was going to call. My daughter's garden, Lillian, I was going to call her, make her a garden called Lily's Garden. And it was only going to be a small one with maybe a tree or two surrounded by other flowers. And then we were going to purchase flowers and roses every year and plant those together and then just create memories. I knew that somewhere I wanted to create memories with my daughter and show her basically the importance of work and what you can create in art. Because I believe planting and gardening is art. It's the way of expressing yourself. And I was going to put a little metal sign that said Lily's Garden on it. And of course, when I came up with the flower farming idea, I'm like, that's it. It's Lily's Garden. And I actually named Lillian, Lily. I mean, uh, I actually, actually named Lillian, Lillian due to I could shorten it into Lily. And Lily is my favorite flower. The Oriental Lilies are my favorite flowers. Yeah. So, yeah. That's fantastic. And what does she think about this? Is she how she's three? Is that right? Yes, she's three. So she doesn't really she know it. too much yet, but she likes it so yet. far. She knows how to water the plants with a sprayer. So she'll water plants with a sprayer. She likes going outside. I don't let her play with the snips yet, but she'll like pick out flowers for me to cut. And her favorite ones are orange, red, and yellow. And she just enjoys running down the aisles. And the aisles are so stuffed right now they've grown so much that you can even barely see her running through the garden but she loves it and you can hear her laughs and it's just the cutest thing it's everything i've envisioned when starting my flower farm and i bet it, i bet you have a lot of butterflies right now don't you yes they are swarming i was outside harvesting this morning for an event tomorrow and i was walking through butterflies and they were just I was just walking right through them. It was amazing. And everybody that comes, they're like, I've never seen this many varieties of butterflies. It's amazing how much the butterflies and the diversity there is. Yeah. So if somebody wants to uh, come by, do you have specific hours or since it's kind of self-service, do people come by all the time and, you know, you never know who's going to be there in the garden cutting flowers? Yeah. Anyone's welcome anytime. It's self-serve. So you can come basically at 6 a.m. when it's light outside until about 8, 830, depending on the time of the year. And you just cut. You just do whatever you want. Cut as many flowers as you want. It's very laid back. 
And you have all different kinds of flowers. Um, I know you said you wish you had more sunflowers, but what are some some of the types of flowers you have right now? Right now, at this point in the season, I have vineyards, sunflowers, lemon basil, marigolds, cosmos, and some rebecca and gomfrina. My favorite out of all of those is, the, of course, the zinnias and lemon basil. The reason is because zinnias, whenever you're a flower farmer, you're not really going to cut the flowers, wait till they bloom and then cut the flowers. You're going to cut them early before they really start blooming. So there's never a field of color. However, with zinnias, you have to wait till they mature. So there's always, no matter what, no matter how much you harvest or when, there's always color, just always. And that's why they're my absolute favorite. And I love zinnias because you can take the dead ones and replant them, you know, like pull the seed. Do you, do you use your, do you pull the seeds off and then use them to plant the next year or do you get fresh seeds? Um, I've never saved seed before, but I am going to this year because I plan on using tons of zinnias. However, when you're flower farming, you want to go with certain color schemes. So I do rebuy my seed every year to get that certain color scheme. However, There is some interesting flowers that can come from saving your seeds because they pollinate with other ones and you can get some really beautiful blooms with, you know, multiple colors in it. So I'm excited about seeing that also. I planted a whole little section this year of white zinnias uh, that were really pretty and those uh, came up really cool. Um, That is nice. I love the white zinnias. They're my favorite. Did you know if you put food color? Yes. If you put food coloring in a cup, put your zinnia in there it'll color it blue or whatever color your food coloring is so oh, i've experienced cool. that yeah it's really cool it's just the vase life doesn't last as long so i don't mm. i don't do that for the ones i sell yeah excellent well what what's next for your business what are you hoping to do in the next you know three to five years i would like to definitely in the next three to five years i'll have a vip you pick garden where you have the normal one. Everybody can go there for say $15. But then for 25, you, for the same size jar, you can go and pick peonies, hydrangas, lilies, bleeding hearts, hostas, whatever else I come up with. That's my like dream garden is where all the special flowers are and the premium flowers that you can't really, you're not going to expect to see them at a you pick. But I'm not going to leave the regular you pick alone. I mean, I'm still going to diversify that option also. Like this coming year, I'm going to have dahlias out there, delphinium, foxglove, different different flowers. It's not going to be just any of next year. Excellent. Zach, do you have a flower garden at your house? I do not, and I've, I'm discovering a lot of flowers I didn't know existed. Oh, but see, <laughs> there you go. We're really, we're really raising Zach's um, level of awareness. How on- big is the flower garden? You know, I don't have the exact measurements off the top of my head. They're written down, but it's not huge. It's not like whenever you go to a you pick in the country where it's filled acres and acres of zinnias. It's not mm. like that. I focus more on like specialty cut flowers. And trying to make sure that I can take the time and keep those flowers taken care of. So in a field of zinnias, you're going to have tons of deadheading to do. And there's no way anyone can really deadhead all their flowers like that. But in my field, it's small enough for me to be able to work it and keep the flowers fresh. That way you get the longest face life. That's something that's really important to me is your flowers lasting. I don't want to sell bad flowers. Well, it's it's kudos on a great uh, job you're doing, and it's really inspirational that you're taking an idea that you had and and actually bringing it to life. So, congratulations! Thank you. And if anybody wants to follow you, they should search Lily's Garden in Newburn, Tennessee, on Facebook, um, and then th- they can also uh, Google. Lily's Garden in Newburgh, and there's a couple articles that have been written, and you know I think they'll be able to find some info there as well. So, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. I enjoy talking with you. And thanks to all you listeners who joined us today at Discovery Park of America. Our mission here is to inspire children and adults to see beyond. To plan an experience here for you and your family, visit discoveryparkofamerica.com. <laughs>